Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas and today's surfboard review is on the Gremlin by Pizel Surfboards. Now I'm excited to talk about this board, but if you follow the show, you know this has become a series because the Gremlin, the Phantom, and the Ghost is all from the same family. We started with the Ghost, which is a high performance short board for those, that wave range of like four to 10 foot. I feel like this board has a really great range. And this is what John John's riding a lot of times in some of his events. Now, I like a lot of things about the Ghost and the things that I've liked about it, it translate into the Phantom. Now, the Phantom's more of a daily driver, that two to six, maybe a little bit bigger. It's very user-friendly, same DNA like I mentioned, wide point front from center, great paddler, very user-friendly and easy to ride. And then they're taking that into the Gremlin. Now the Gremlin's like one to four foot. I think the website says one to six. I beg to differ. I think we're in that one to four foot range. After the four foot, you should be transitioning into the Phantom. And beyond that, four to six foot plus, and it's really round, you jump into the Ghost. Hey, look, this is gonna be a great review. Sit back, grab your favorite drink, and enjoy the show. Now, as we dive into the attributes of the Gremlin, I wanna pause first and talk about what I expect out of a small wave groveler performance board. We have to have good paddling. If we're surfing waves about this big and we have to generate our own speed, we need help from the surfboard. We can have great technique, but if we have the right attributes in a board, it really makes surfing small waves a lot more fun. Some of that stuff is wide point front from center, lots of foam under the chest and front foot, a board that has get up and go, right? This board has great paddling. It's user friendly, so if you're a lower end beginner to intermediate this suits your style just get a little bit more foam because it's going to help you paddle and get down the line here and you're going to be able to turn it quick because of the tail rocker and the surface area here with the concaves so it's really important to pick a board that suits not only your wave but also your ability but let's move into the middle of the board and the back of the board if we're comparing the Gremlin to the Phantom and the Ghost, they have lowered the rocker a little bit. It's still relaxed and easy paddle. A little bit less rocker here, but they kept a little bit of rocker or tail curve so we can still get that performance. Now we've talked a little bit about rocker. Let's talk about the rail. It's kind of chunky. It's full, but it's round. I, I would say, would you say maybe it's boxy? Well, for me, a boxy rail kind of comes out a little bit square with a flat deck. I would say this rail is a little bit tapered on the top so that it doesn't have a flat deck and that rail being full, but it's round and that's gonna make it nice and forgiving, right? And what I'm talking about is that let's say we're surfing one to two, one to three foot. We've got some flat sections. So we go rail to rail to get through that. Then we hit a section that kind of crumbles. I can hit that to project because there's a section after that that I'm trying to get to. Well, this board did that very well. Because the rails are forgiving, it never bit anywhere. Like when I talk about bite, it's like sometimes a board catches and when it catches, it still speed for me. So I have to reset and then go again. Well, this board had great flow from maneuver to maneuver. It projected well and it felt great off the bottom. Very much like the Phantom. So two to six foot surf, you want to be in something like this because it's not going to have um, any corks off the bottom or it's gonna have enough rocker to fit in those sections that are a little bit steeper, right? But when you're in the one to three foot surf and you're really looking to get that best out of your groveler, this board right here really is separated itself from the Phantom. This board's gonna be maximum speed, better paddle, it's flatter, it'll get better through flat sections and project longer over certain kind of sections that Maybe a board like this with a little bit more rocker won't do. So let's talk about concave for a second. 
it's pretty simple. He's running a, a pretty aggressive single into a double that starts right in here. And then as it comes through here, there's more V in the Gremlin than there was in the Phantom. And what I like about that V coupled with the double is, you know, the double's channeling that water through the, through the left side and the right side of the board. And then the V, it all enhances and helps water flow to get the board to go easy rail to rail. And I'll tell you, one of the things that I've personally been working on in my own surfing, whether it's one to three foot surf, two to six foot surf, or even bigger, is I'm really trying to work on going from turn to turn without hesitation. And so what I need for that is I, I need to better my technique, number one, but I also need the board to be providing the speed for me to have where I can come off of the bottom turn into a top turn, right into a bottom turn again. And I've talked about this in the past on certain boards, they have more flow than others. And this board had great flow. And the reason I bring that up is because the rockers, the surface area, it's given me the speed coupled with the concaves and the V out the tail. All these things are key for me to get what I want out of this board. And like I said, if I look at the footage and I look at it over and over and over again, what I'm trying to do is separate something about this board that looks a little different than other boards that fit in the same wave range. This board had great flow. Let's talk about speed for a second. When I get up and go, that's speed, right? <clears throat> when I hit a turn and I wanna drive through that turn and actually try and gain speed, that's coming from the board's attributes, the fins, and the way the board's designed. It even did that well, and I really felt like whether I was getting speed down the line, projecting off the section, or driving through my turns, it had it all. So now I wanna talk about the construction of this board. Both the Gremlin and the Phantom have the EPS construction. With it having a stringer, it's gonna feel most like a PU, right? But these boards, the EPS is a, it feels alive under your feet. It gives you that little extra pop and it's a little bit more buoyant. Now, this board, we gotta talk about durability and the pressure dents, right? On the scale of one to 10, 10 being no pressure dents at all, this board comes in at about a four. It's pretty well pounded here because what I'm looking for in these reviews is I'm looking for maximum performance. This is a custom 5.4 because I wanted a little bit more length and John, at Pizel wanted to make sure the board has maximum performance for these reviews. That might be a little bit different. You might want the board to last a little bit longer, so getting one of these stock off the racks is gonna have a better glass job, or you can order a custom and ask the folks at Pizel to help you get a little bit more life out of the, out of the board, even if you go EPS. Now I wanna talk about the fins I chose. So for the Ghost, the Phantom, and the Gremlin, I kind of wanted to stay consistent with using the same fins and the same setups. Why? Because they're all coming from the same DNA family. I wanted to see if I could really feel the difference or if we could see the similarities by using the same fins and the same setups. So the whole time I've been using the John John Tech Flex, which is a control series fin, which is gonna come around a four, come in around a four on the ride number, right? And what's different about this fin than the last set that they had of his, this has an epoxy resin, so it feels a little bit more alive under my feet, as opposed to the old set had a polyester resin. Now, I could really feel the difference because in smaller waves, on the first set of TechFlex that they came out with, they felt dead under my feet. What I mean by dead, it just didn't have any pop or spring. It wasn't enhancing my surfing in smaller waves. But I did like them when the waves got bigger. But these ones I've been riding now in one to three foot with the Gremlin. I rode it as a thruster and as a quad. This had great speed. It has good consistency because of that control. I feel like I can push as hard as I want and my turns are gonna be consistent, right? And so I ran the same setup on the Phantom. So first we started with the quad because I had such great success with the Ghost and the Phantom at where I like to surf. So we ran the John John Large side fins, and then I've been running the Hayden Shape quad rears. This is a really upright quad rear set, and because it's upright, I can get that pivot I want and get in that pocket vertical fast. So maximum drive from the large side fins with a wide base. It has a good amount of sweep so I can get my carve and generate the speed I'm looking for. And then the quad weirs, like I said, I can get up there and get it pivot fast and, and it felt really, really good. Now, 
on the on the best waves, the days that we shot, I was running a quad. And some people said, oh, the Phantom looked better as a quad than it did as a, did as a thruster. Well, maybe so in the footage that we got, but you gotta remember, when the waves are really good and they have perfect lines to them, the board's gonna look better as a quad if that's what I ran. So I beg to differ that the board felt good as a thruster and as a quad in all three boards. It just depends, if you wanna maximize speed, Go with the quad. It also loosens up the tail a little bit and makes the board playful, right? But I did run it with the thruster, mostly on the smaller waves, and I had fun. It had the projection I was looking for, and the speed, and the drive in my turns. So let's look at some smaller waves together. This one's got a flat spot right in the middle, but the board carried the speed real nice to get to this section right here. That was a fun little turn and able to keep going. Now as we get into this left, you can see there's some texture on the surface. Board's carrying speed real well. I don't have to hop, so the speed's there to keep me in the pocket where I want to be the whole time. Now this little right, it's a little bit bigger. There's that texture. Here's that little that turn that I like to set up, able to get some projection out of that floater right there. Now that turn was okay, but these two turns feel good. The board's got a little bit of release and keeping it super fun. Here, this one, like top turn, bottom turn, no hesitation, decent speed the whole time. So let's look at some good waves together. Board's really fluent, and look at that tail release on the quad. Again, release. The board felt so good as a quad, and I got great waves for it. Now look at this right. This is a quad also. Look at the projection and speed this board's going. This is what we're looking for. I blow it on this last floater and I wish I had seen what the end would have come to, but the board had incredible speed. Now this left right here, again, I feel like I have speed without having to work real hard for it and I can hit every section I want. Now some of the struggles was, watch it grab on the nose right here, right there, you see that? So as you get this board into bigger surf, it's really not designed for that, it'll do it, but I felt like there were, were some struggles. And um, I want to point it out on the next way, but look at this little left right here. Real clean, quick surfing. Watch the drive through this turn. Pop. That's it. That's what I'm looking for. Now look at the board grab right here. Uh, right there. Coming off that turn, it, and I got flow. So as the wave gets smaller, the board goes better and better and better. And there's the projection and speed we're looking for. This board's really fast. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review on the Gremlin by Pizel Surfboards. I had a blast. I believe that the, the wave range for this board is one to four feet. It will do five to six if you get stuck riding a small wave performance board in bigger waves. You'll still have fun. But you saw it, as I'm coming down at times, we'd get a little catch right here, or I didn't have enough curb, so I had to baby some bottom turns. But for the most part, this board performed very well. And if you're beyond that four foot and bigger, we should be transitioning to the Phantom. That's what the whole family uh, DNA of the ghost board's all about. So Daily Driver had a blast on the Phantom. High performance short board, four to eight foot plus, depending on your length, great board. All three boards, very user friendly. On the Gremlin, I recommend it for the beginner intermediate all the way up to expert or pro. I think you'd have a blast and you're gonna maximize your fun in one to four foot surf. Look, if you like the show, subscribe. You can also find us at surfandshow.com or on Instagram at surfandshow. Special shout out thanks to John Pizel and the folks at Pizel Surfboards for sending these boards down for review. That's it for today. Until next time, see you in the water. Bye-bye.